Hi everyone, it's Gardener Julia here. Today I am at the Ventura Park Garden and today is our final garden lesson of the year. Thank you so much for participating in our virtual garden lessons. I know it was a really different kind of school year and at times a really hard year for some of us. So for our final virtual garden lesson, we are going to focus on the future, what we're hopeful for and what we're grateful for. We are going to start by reading a land acknowledgement so we can learn a little bit more about the indigenous peoples who lived here on this land before we were here. And then we're going to do a simple art project with flowers and leaves to end our year together. Let's get started. Our ASL word for this month is community. You might think of our garden as a community. So let's try it. It goes like this. Can you do it with me? Community. Keep that word community in your head for the rest of our video. Have you ever heard of a land acknowledgement before? Hmm. Maybe some of your classes read a land acknowledgement on a regular basis. A land acknowledgement is a statement that helps us recognize that the land that we live on, play on, and work on was stolen from the indigenous people who lived here before us. We have an important responsibility to take care of this land that is in our gardens and acknowledge the long history. I am going to read the land acknowledgement Next year, we are going to read it together when we are in the garden and learn more about the tribes that I am going to mention. We have the great honor to grow this garden on the ancestral lands of the indigenous peoples of Portland, including the Multnomahs, Kathlamet, Clackamas, Tumwater, Tualatin Kalapuya, Wasco, Malala, Cowlitz, and Watlala bands of the Chinook and many other tribes who make their homes along the Columbia River. These native people live here and have lived here and cared for this land in partnership with the soil, water, and living beings since time immemorial, before remembered time. We honor the strength and resilience of native people and we thank the past, present, and future elders and ancestors of this land. We know that it is our responsibility to show kindness and respect for all living th beings each and every day. We show respect by learning about native people, plants, and ways of growing, and by taking care of the soil, water, and all living things in the garden. Let's take a moment to close our eyes and say a silent thank you to the first people to care for this land. We are also going to make a silent commitment to continue caring for this land and our garden. One way that we can care for the garden community is by planting plants for people to eat and for pollinators and other critters in our garden to eat as well. Thank you to the fourth and fifth graders who took our what would you grow survey and told us what you would like me to grow in the garden this year. Our top choices from students were carrots, potatoes, cucumbers, and strawberries. Right behind me, I have a bed of potatoes growing. Let's take a look at how these potatoes got planted. Potato plants are a really cool type of plant because the potatoes grow underground. By creating these mounds around the potato plant, this encourages the potato plants to fill that entire tall mound with even more potatoes than it would make if this was all just very flat. If I continued to cover up this plant with more and more soil, this plant would continue to make more and more potatoes. So by the time we harvest, each of these mounds should be filled with potatoes. Hopefully when we are all back together, you can help us dig up and harvest these potatoes. To wrap up this year, we are going to take a moment to reflect. We're gonna reflect on some hard things. We're gonna call these worries and some hopeful positive things. We're gonna call these wishes. 
You can do this activity in a lot of different ways. It's up to you and what you feel comfortable with. One of the things that I love most about the garden is that the garden takes really hard things and turns it into beautiful things. We can see this in the way that new plants grow after really hard, cold winters. Even after a year like this that we had a huge snow and ice storm, many of our plants survived all winter long, even if it seemed almost impossible for them to survive. We also see this when dead plants decompose and turn into compost that ends up feeding a new generation of plants in the garden. All right, I'm gonna show you how this activity goes. We are gonna start by doing a little bit of art. We are gonna turn plain old paper into something beautiful for us to write our reflections on. All right, so we are going to start by getting a piece of paper. I walked around the garden and I collected a bunch of really colorful flowers like our dandelions and some leaves as well. We are going to use the natural pigments inside of these plants to decorate our blank piece of paper. I'm going to start in the middle of my paper. I think taking this dandelion and smushing the pigment out of this dandelion onto this piece of paper. There we go, it's kind of like a sun in the middle of my paper. Then I'm going to take these rhododendron flowers and fill out my next layer. There are lots of natural pigments inside of our plants and flowers in the garden. You can go around your neighborhood or your backyard and see if you can find things that can make this natural pigment. Oh look, I noticed that this pink rhododendron is turning this kind of deeper purple color. Here's what it is starting to look like. And my last layer, I'm gonna take some leaves and rub the chlorophyll out of it. The chlorophyll is what turns leaves green. I'm going to add this green layer to the very outside. And there we go, here is my decorated piece of paper. Now that your paper is all nice and decorated, this is the time that you are going to write down your worries. So start by writing down something that was a worry for you this year. Maybe it's that we were worried about COVID or our families or being isolated or not knowing when school was going to come back. You might have your own very different thing that was a worry for you this year. You don't have to share this with anyone. You can keep it to yourself and to this piece of paper. Take a moment to think of something that was a worry for you and draw it on your new decorated paper. For me, I wrote down that this year I was worried for my friends, my family, and my students. It was really hard being away from all of them and you this year. All right, and next, you're gonna write something that you are hopeful for. This is where you write your wishes. Maybe you're hopeful about seeing your grandparents again or playing with your friends at the park, or maybe it's being back in the school garden together. So this is where you're gonna write your wish. Hmm. I wrote that I'm hopeful for our summer, for a nice, warm, and relaxing summer. I also said that I'm hopeful for my brother who's getting married to his love this summer. All right, now that you have your worries and your wishes, you can cut your piece of paper in half. So I have my worries and I have my wishes. We are going to practice letting go of our worries that we have held onto this whole year. So you can take your piece of paper and you can bury it somewhere outside. 
all of the decomposers in the soil will start to eat away at your piece of paper in the soil and your worries will start to decompose. So you can imagine your worries getting eaten down and being turned into new soil that will allow for new plant growth in the soil. Then what I'm going to do with my wishes is I'm going to fold it up and plant it next to a new seed that I'm going to plant. I'm going to go outside and plant a sunflower seed. I know that tucking this in with my sunflower seed that my wish will decompose and turn into something beautiful. You can also keep your worries and your wishes as a piece of art as a reminder of the hard and the beautiful things that happen in life and keep in mind that life is always changing and growing all around us one more word in sign language is thank you so thank you for joining me today and for joining me all year long happy summer bye friends